Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Kit, and this is my world. And a very hot and humid place it is too. I'm sweating in places you just don't want to know about. In fact, I'm naked under this table, and I've had to switch my fans off because of the noise, so sweat will occur. I apologise for being gross. It's miserable. I don't like the heat. Bring on some snow. Anyway, I'm going to do a tag because it's Tag Tuesday, and this time I'm tackling the 20 bookish questions tag, originally by By the Book. Um, I can't find a page to link. I'll give it another try before I upload this, but at the moment I can't find a page to link. Uh, but I did steal this from my friend Hugo at Hugo Reads, so I will definitely leave a link to his page. And without further ado, let's get cracking. Question number one. How many books is too many books in a book series? How many times is too many times to mention the word books in a question? Anyway, um, there's no such thing as too many. I love long running book series. Is, 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 is. Question number two. How do you feel about cliffhangers? I love cliffhangers. I grew up watching cliffhangers. Um, the phrase cliffhangers um, originates in early Saturday morning serials, which they used to run in cinemas in the days before television and in the days when there was a lot less entertainment around. I love cliffhangers because I get excited. I, I like to be kept on the edge of my seat. I like something exciting and dramatic to happen and to force me to want to continue reading. Or if I'm watching a TV series um, or a series of films, I want something that's going to make me excited enough to keep going. Um, because I like it. It's entertaining and lots of people do. That's why it's a tradition. Question number three, hard copy or paperback? Both, obviously, they're both good and they both have their pros and they both have their cons. Um, obviously, a hardback um, is prettier. Um, it's more rugged and dependable. It certainly looks better in your bookcase, um, but it's heavier and more awkward and harder to work with when you're trying to read. Um, paperbacks uh, typically are tattier and they get tattier quicker, um, but they're lighter and easier to handle when you're reading them and you can sort of fold them over and do all that stuff that some people find offensive. However, I'm fully converted to Kindle now and I still contend that Kindle is better than both hardback or paperback. It's just better the only thing that's missing so far from my Kindle experience is the ability to flick through the pages and sniff to get that lovely wafty aroma of book. Um, but I can live without that just because of all the other many, many benefits. Question number four. Favourite book? Well, anyone who watches my channel with any regularity will know that I'm going to say The Empire Trilogy by Raymond E. Feist and Janny Wirtz, The Devery Books by Catherine Kerr. I'm now going to add The Farseer Books by Robin Hobb, books which I had previously dismissed as far too painful to read, but I've now rediscovered a love and a slightly thicker skin. Um, and uh, yes, Empire, Devery and Farseer. I'm going to go with those. Question number five. Least favourite book? I think it's time to summon the rabbit of ranting. By necessity, this will be a brief rant due to the fact that it's very, very hot and I'm wearing a woolly hat. This is a difficult question for me to answer because, generally speaking, there aren't books that I dislike because I don't read them. I'm a very discerning chooser of books. I only choose to read things that there's a very good chance that I'll enjoy. So I've had to turn to the internet for inspiration, and a very cursory glance at the internet has provided me with a list of titles. These are books that I have not read, and I never would read them, um, but the titles tell you enough. Um, correct, not politically correct. How Same-Sex Marriage Hurts Everyone by Frank Churak. 
Making Gay Okay, How Rationalising Homosexual Behaviour is Changing Everything by Robert R. Riley. Coming Out Straight, Understanding and Healing Homosexuality by Richard A. Cohen. A Parent's Guide to Preventing Homosexuality by Joseph Nicolosi. Straight Talk About Homosexuality, The Other Side of Tolerance by Richard A. Cohen. Gay Children, Straight Parents, A Plan for Family Healing by Richard A. Cohen. What is Marriage, Man and Woman, A Defence by Sheriff Gerges. I I could go on, but what's the point? There is lots of hateful shit out there, and there are lots of hateful shits spouting hateful shit. Uh, So I suppose, in the spirit of this being Pride Month, my small, humble contribution uh, to that cause is to vocalise my disapproval of all this shit. And I'm going to wave my flag while I say it and erect an ear in solidarity. In the spirit of this being Pride Month, uh, I guess my humble contribution to that effort uh, is to just uh, finish this little rant uh, with a few healing and positive quotes um, that came at the top of this awful list, which, by the way, I got from Goodreads. Um, So, uh, being gay is not a choice, but being a bigot certainly is. That is an inarguable fact. If being gay is a choice, then when did you decide to become straight? Hear, hear. If the fetus you save is gay, will you... (laughs) If the fetus you save is gay, will you still fight for its rights? Hell yes. (laughs) That is beating them at their own game. I love it. Um, No child is born homophobic. I'm sure that is quite true. Here's, Here's a good one. I hate the word homophobia. It's not a phobia. You are not scared. You're an arsehole. And that's actor Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman said that. God himself said that. So it must be true. And of course it's true. Yes, you're not scared. You're an arsehole. Uh, And um, on that note, I'm going to return the rabbit of ranting back to his box and my flag back to its shelf. (coughs) Question number six. Love triangles. Yes or no? Yes, I love triangles. (laughs) Thank you very much for asking me. Um, But also, yes, um, if they're done well, um, you don't need to stick with all the boring old cliches and, you know, rehash all the old uh, story elements that have been done before. But fundamentally, yes, um, I think love triangles can be interesting, uh, especially um, for my uh, personal area of interest, if they are pansexual love triangles. That's interesting to me. Um, But yeah, it's all good fodder for interesting storytelling, as long as it includes interesting storytelling. Um, But I'm certainly not a prude. Um, I don't disapprove of any of that type of stuff. In fact, give me some good sex scenes. I enjoy that stuff. Just write it well. Question number seven. The most recent book you just couldn't finish. The Lies of Locke Lamora. I didn't like it. I should have done. There was much about it that should have appealed to me. uh, And yet I just couldn't get into it. I tried. um, Certain things about it really pissed me off. uh, And I made a video about it, which few people watched, um, comparing it with a couple of other books. Um, But essentially, I didn't like it because I didn't click with the author's voice fundamentally, but also I just found it boring. Um, So um, lots of people were waxing lyrical about how excellent The Lies of Locke Lamora was. It just wasn't for me. Question number eight. A book you're currently reading. Well, I'm currently reading Fool's Errand, which is book one of the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb. Um, That's at the time of recording. By the time you see this, it's likely to be another book by Robin Hobb further along in the series, because 
I make my videos in advance. Um, so at the moment, at time of recording, it's Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. Question number nine. Last book you recommended to someone? Well, this one's a difficult one because I've recommended several books to several people all at kind of around the same time. So there have been various people who I've been chatting to in the comments section of various of my videos. Um, and so I've found myself recommending books by Bill Bryson. Um, so I recommended A Walk in the Woods, um, Notes from a Small Island, Mother Tongue, and A Short History of Nearly Everything. Um, those are all Bryson books that I really love, although I love all of his books. Well, most of them. There are two that I don't like. Um, and um, I've also been recommending The Empire Trilogy by Feist and Wirtz since time immemorial, uh, and the same with the Dagger Spell books by Catherine Kerr. I've been recommending those a lot lately. Well, in fact, I've been recommending those for as long as I've been recommending the Feist Wirtz books. Um, and um, also the Robin Hobb books. Now, for a long time, I uh, promised that I would never read those again. I was very distressed when I read them before. Um, but as you know, I'm on a Hobb binge at the moment. Um, and uh, one of the people that I recommended the Hob books to was my boyfriend, um, who is currently buddy reading them with me. Uh, so uh, um, lots of books have been recommended to many different people all at around the same time, and it's impossible to say um, when the most recent one was. Question number 10. Oldest book you've read by publication date? Well, I'm not that clever. I haven't read any of the ancient, ancient classics. I haven't read Homer. Uh, I haven't read any of the great ancient Greek philosophers. I haven't I haven't read any of that really clever intellectual stuff from thousands of years ago. The oldest thing that I can think of that I've read doesn't really count as a book. Uh, it's a poem. And of course, it's Beowulf. And it's from, I think, the 8th century, although that's possibly open to interpretation. I'm going to say, well, it's about a thousand years old, give or take a few decades. Um, uh, but it's set in the sixth century. Um, and it, it's a poem. It's not a book. So I don't suppose it really counts. But it's the oldest thing I can think of that I read. And I read it at school. If I discovered it for myself, who knows, I may have liked it. Um, but because I read it at school, and I certainly um, found it quite heavy going, um, I didn't really enjoy it. In fact, it would be fair to say that I rather disliked it. Um, but I'm going to blame the school environment for most of that dislike. Um, and I've never tried it since. Question number 11. Newest book you've read by publication date? Well, it's The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this was published in 2015. So for me, that's a very recent book indeed. And I did a review of it. So if you trawl through all my recent videos, I'm sure you will find it. Question number 12. Favourite author? Well, again, it's difficult to pick just one, um, but my favourite authors, plural, are definitely Catherine Kerr, uh, Robin Hobb, Raymond E. Feist, Jani Wirtz and Bill Bryson. Question number 13. Buying books or borrowing books? Always buying. Um, never be a bumble flumble or borrow a bee or something. Something about not borrowing. Question number 14. A book you dislike that everyone else seems to love. Again, I'm going to say The Lies of Loch Lamora. That one seemed to be a very popular book. Um, it did very well on Booktube. Everyone was raving about it, so I bought it and didn't like it at all. Question number 15. Bookmarks or dog ears? Well, I have recently confessed to being a dog era in my past, and I would like to emphasise again for the record that I'm speaking about the past, and you shouldn't judge someone for their past. I knew not what I did, but having stolen this tag from Hugo at Hugo Reads and having seen what he had to say about dog eras... Uh, dog earing people who dog ear are fucking psychos and uh, stay away from me please i will hunt you down and i will kill you 
I just want to apologise. I'm sorry. I'm not a psychopath. I'm not a crazy person. Uh, I didn't know any better. I was young. I was... I, I was a callow youth. And now that I've matured and attained wisdom and a white beard, I don't do dog earring anymore. Um, bookmarks, uh, definitely bookmarks. Although digital bookmarks because I use a Kindle. Question number 16. A book you can always reread. Well, it's three books and it's the Empire Trilogy. I love the Empire Trilogy. You're sick of hearing about the Empire Trilogy, but the answer to the question is the Empire Trilogy. Question number 17. Can you read while hearing music? Well, theoretically I can. I can have music playing and my eyes will move across the page and words will go into them. But those words won't lodge in my brain because my brain is busy listening to music. So, no. If I'm reading, I need silence. I can handle birdsong. I can hear the trickling of a gentle stream. I can handle a bit of wind in the branches of a tree. What I can't handle is anything that involves my brain needing to analyse it, which includes music. Even music that doesn't have lyrics. I'm still analysing it. So um, anything like that is a distraction and I want complete immersion while I'm reading. Question number 18. One POV or multiple POVs? And for anyone who doesn't know what a POV is, it's a point of view. So one POV. This is not a hard and fast rule. I generally prefer one POV uh, because I'm a little bit special and I like to stick with one character and not get jogged off course um, by suddenly lurching into another person's brain and or experiences. So a good example um, of um, a single POV is, of course, a book written in the first person, like the ones I'm reading currently. Uh, the Farseer books by Robin Hobb are mainly written in the first person. They're from the point of view of the main character, Fitz, and you stay with him throughout the books. I've had to skip the Live Ship Traders trilogy, which happens in the middle, because those ones become third person, and that messes up my whole buzz while I'm in a first-person world. However, I generally prefer third-person narratives, and I'm happy to switch POVs occasionally, as long as you don't lurch too much. It needs to be done with sensitivity, and it needs to flow smoothly. Um, a really good example of a third-person narrative with switching POVs is the Borables trilogy. Um, for example, in the first book of the trilogy, The Borables, um, when the Borables are off on their assassination mission, um, they're breaking into the Rumble High Command to assassinate the ten leaders uh, of the Rumbles, um, each of the Borables has his own target and you switch between the various different Borables at whichever point in the quest they happen to be at. The majority of the book all the Borables are together um, but when they separate off and each one goes after his individual target um, then you follow them individually and switch back and forth between the different characters as they carry out the assassinations and that works really well and it's not jarring at all. So Generally speaking, I prefer a third-person narrative and one POV, or not too many POVs and with smooth transitions. Question number 19. Do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Almost always it's multiple days, um, because I like big chunky books, uh, and so uh, it's going to take several days to read each one. Um, I very rarely read a book that's small enough to do in a single sitting. Question number 20. Who do you tag? Oh, who don't I tag? Everyone. I tag everybody. If you want to do this thing, consider yourself tagged. And on that note, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't already, you know what to do. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share, comment, do all the good stuff, and I will see you next time. See you later.